Welcome back to Disney Disasters, the show where I put my mind, body, and general sanity on the line in the interest of reviewing and critiquing every Disney Channel original movie. Today's disaster is a movie about jump rope. Yeah, that's about it. It's jumpin'. Let's start the damage control. So, jumpin', a movie about jump ropes. I didn't know much about this movie going in. In fact, the only reason I chose it to be the next Disney disaster is when I told my sister that I didn't know which one to watch next, she replied, wasn't there a movie about jump rope? And thus, Jump In became the next Disney disaster. One thing I was worried about going in is, well, it is a movie about jump rope. Let's face it. Jumping rope doesn't sound that exciting for a movie premise, so I'm hoping they can make it look at least... impressive? Well, we're gonna find out as we jump in... See what I did there? To jump in. Nailed it. At the beginning of Jump In, we're introduced to a boy boxer named Izzy Daniels, aka the sidekick from High School Musical. He lives with his little sister and his father, and it's shown that since his mother's death, he and his father's relationship has revolved around the sport of boxing. But when his neighbor Mary's double dutch jump rope team loses a member, he agrees to fill in, with his boxing talents making him a natural replacement. Soon he begins to discover that maybe boxing isn't the sport for him, and maybe his heart belongs to Double Dutch. And possibly his new teammate Mary, who he becomes romantically involved with. But he has to do jump rope in secret, otherwise people will think he's gay! Yeah, that's not said flat out, but that's the implication when he says he doesn't want anyone to know he's doing Double Dutch. So of course, Rodney, his boxing rival and the local bully, eventually exposes him, and he gets all pouty and emotional. Will Izzy rise to the occasion and follow through for his teammates? Will he and his father have an emotional heart-to-heart -heart talk? Will Izzy and Mary end up together? Yeah, at around the halfway mark, this film really shows its hand. It's got a very by-the-numbers story to tell, but much like Xenon, it's one of those films that relies on the execution being good, rather than its original storyline blowing you away. The romance is okay, the characters have a kind of they insult each other but it turns into flirting kind of thing going on, but it never crosses the line into mean-spirited bullying like I feared it would. The subplot with his dad was unexplored. They never really mentioned that he was only doing boxing to make his dad happy until the final third. However, the actors both work well together and create a couple of nice emotional moments. Izzy's transition from making fun of Double Dutch into actually kind of enjoying it is well done. He shows interest in it early on, but still keeps cracking jokes and making fun of it until he slowly comes around. The big change comes after he actually starts coming up with routines for the group to perform, contributing ideas and being a part of the group. So that's nice and well done and just very sweet. But, as I said, it's kinda predictable. With any predictable storyline, we need the characters and actors to really pick up the slack and get us invested. So let's see if they can do that. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet because pretty much everything is good here. The actors do well in their roles, I wouldn't say there's any standout performances, but they do get you invested and make use of the material. I will throw out Izzy aka Corbin Blue as one of the actors who really makes it work. Izzy's character isn't the best written, and his constant insulting of Double Dutch and his sister and his friends could have really gotten annoying in the beginning. Instead, the actor's chemistry turns it into a really charming and charismatic performance. Same with his sometimes flirty, sometimes insulting banter with his love interest, Mary. In the hands of a weaker actor, it really could have just come off as mean or unhealthy, but Izzy pulls it off. It may not sound like I was having a great time so far. After all, all I've said is the plotline was predictable and the actors pulled it off. However, 
There are a few things that do elevate this movie, so let's talk about them in the next category. I didn't really know how to label this category, but hey, here it is. The first thing I want to talk about is the music. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but it is unique. Why is it unique? Because it is absolutely drenched in the early 2000s. I'm not a music critic or even that big of a music fan, but watch any scene of this movie with music and you can just feel the 2000s hip-hop aesthetic coming through. And this movie is very early 2000s, so that works well. The other big technical thing that ups this is, surprisingly, the jump rope. Yeah, as I said at the beginning, this whole thing would be stupid if the jump rope didn't look impressive, and hey, it looks super cool. Like, better than the dancing in high school musical cool. Plus, when they're not doing double dutch, sometimes they just pull dumb stunts like this, and it's just kinda fun, and really sells his character as this super talented athletic dude. It may sound like a little thing, but this kind of stuff really sets this movie apart from many others like it, and hell, even many of the Disney disasters. It gives it a flavor, something that you can look at and say, this is what this movie did that is unique, and they also did it well. Even a simple story with somewhat generic characters can really set itself apart with these kinds of elements. With that out of the way, let's jump over our last hurdle. Jump based puns are so stupid, by the way. In conclusion, Jump In is fun. Even with a basic storyline, characters, and structure, I still find myself struggling to find a bad thing to say about this movie because it pulls it off in a fun enough way that I don't regret watching it. There were some other faults that I did have with this movie. A subplot that went nowhere, a narrator that served no purpose other than explain what emotions we should be feeling. But the film comes together well enough that I didn't feel this stuff was worth mentioning. Jump In may be simple, but it also has some really effective things that they put real effort into. The stunts and music and some of the character moments really do make it stand out. That's why I've decided to put Jump In on the top of my Disney Disasters ranking order, dethroning the reigning champion High School Musical. So that's it, Jump In left me completely satisfied and happier than any other Disney Disaster I've seen so far. Now if you want to talk about a movie that did the opposite, well, let's just wait for next month, and viewers beware, you're in for a spoop.